In this video, I'll be reviewing the Clue Snowboard Bindings, which work with any boot to turn your setup into a step-in setup. I'll be covering the four main topics of how easy they are to use, how reliable they are on the mountain, how comfortable they are, and their durability after extended use. And then I'll give you my final thoughts. To give a quick recap of how much I've used the bindings, last season I used the Clue Bindings at Blue Mountain, Jack Frost, Big Boulder, and Round Top Mountain in Pennsylvania. I took a drive up to Vermont first thing in the morning during a snowstorm, and I went to Okemo and Stowe Resort in the same day. Closer to spring, I went back to Vermont to check out Mount Snow. I went back to my home resort where I first learned to snowboard years ago, Mountain Creek in New Jersey. I used the bindings at Hunter in New York. Then I went to New Hampshire's resorts. Crotched Mountain, Atitash, Sunapee, and Wildcat Mountain. Towards the end of the season, I took a trip with friends to Colorado to snowboard in the west for my first time. The timing was perfect and it started snowing just as we got to Breckenridge. I ended the Colorado trip by visiting Vail Resort and checking out the legendary back bowls and riding in powder for my first time. In the meantime, before the next snowboard season, I've been riding at Big Snow at least once a week to start learning how to ride park. Based on my experience, here's what I thought of the Clue Bindings. To start off, let's talk about how easy they are to use. I appreciate how convenient the Clue Bindings are, plus they're compatible with any snowboard boot. You can save a lot of time between runs, so instead of freezing your butt strapping in, you just step in and you're ready to go. That way you spend more time riding. Nothing beats how quickly and smoothly you can get in and out of these bindings. By the way, if you're more comfortable strapping in sitting down, you can still step in while sitting. Once you're done with a run, you get right out by pulling the red handle behind the high back. The locking mechanism only disengages if you pull before trying to lift your foot. Stepping out comes in one smooth motion. Thanks to Clue, you can save time and keep riding lift after lift after lift. Now let's answer. Can you still step in if the toe strap is tightened all the way down? Yes, you can, and I'll show you why it still works. The correct way of stepping in, no matter how tight your toe straps are, is by scooping your foot underneath the toe strap. This way, when you click your heels in, your toe scoops right into place. Make sure you don't just push the toe strap forward, but scoop instead. With the toe straps fully tightened, it's going to be a tighter squeeze, but the heel still locks correctly. Next, let's talk about reliability. How secure are the clue bindings? To demonstrate, even on the lift with only one foot strapped in, even when I'm shaking my board, kicking it around, the board stays completely secure. Even if I pull on the release handle, the locking mechanism only releases when the boot first has pressure against the foot pad. In all my time riding, I've never had an unintentional release. Even when I'm falling, which happens a lot when I'm progressing, the clue bindings stay secure. I'm okay. Even after rough use, the clue bindings still work well. Another common question is, how do the clue bindings perform with snow and ice buildup? To test this out, I purposely left the bases of the bindings outside for about an hour while it was snowing. You can see here, ice started to form around the surface of the heel latches. The good news is, the unique design of the clue bindings still allows you to step in, and stomping down shaves the ice off. I'm still able to click the high back in by pushing down with just one arm, so it still works well even with some ice. Stepping in automatically shaves the ice away from the locking points. Now let's talk about how comfortable the clue bindings are. A lot of you have asked about the piece of the upper assembly that stays underneath your boot and how comfortable walking is with it. I took calipers and measured the underfoot piece, and it's only 8.4 millimeters thick or 33 hundredths of an inch. The piece is rigid, so I can feel it underneath my boot when I'm walking on a hard surface, but on snow, I don't notice it. Whether I'm walking on pavement, 
up and down metal stairs, or inside the lodge, I'm able to walk just fine even with the high back attached to my boot. Something I'm sure we can all agree on is, it's more comfortable than walking in ski boots. Now let's take a closer look at the durability of the bindings. After stepping in and out after every run, how do the lower assemblies handle all the usage? You can see the wear pattern where the upper assembly rubs against the plastic leading to the attachment points. Next, let's look at how durable the upper assemblies are. Keep in mind that red piece is the one that stays under your boot as you're walking. The red rubber surprisingly did not wear down much. You can see where the plastic friction points began to wear down. But regardless of the wear, the attachment points work perfectly fine and the setup stays structurally sound. So what are my final thoughts? I highly recommend the clue bindings for snowboarders looking for the convenience of a step-in setup while still being able to use their regular boots that they're already comfortable in. The fact that the clue bindings combine the feeling and comfort of strap bindings while allowing for an option of stepping in is great engineering. The clue bindings are clever, new, and innovative, and they have the appropriate name of the Freedom Model. They've proven to be easy and intuitive to use, reliable and secure, designed to be comfortable, and built to last. If you're looking to purchase the bindings, I'll leave a link in the description. You can use code GOOZ10, that's G-O-O-Z-1-0, for 10% off your purchase. Using this code gives me commission and helps me continue making snowboard videos for you on this channel. If you have any questions that I haven't yet answered, leave a comment below. If this video helped, leave a like and subscribe for more board sport reviews and tutorials, and thank you for watching.